Good, let's start then. Thank you for giving me half an hour extra. <laughs> Sorry. No, I'll try to finish in the hour. Um, so uh, there was a very good question over the break, and this was something I was trying to swipe under the rug, and that's a bad idea. Um, these correlation functions of, uh, um, <coughs> or what, 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 what should I say? So um, in principle, the scaling dimensions of an operator in the chiral algebra, so this um, scaling dimension that you get after the twist, um, the way I gave it to you doesn't need to be an integer or a half integer. And that would mean that correlation, if that's the case, that would mean that the correlation functions of the twisted uh, Schur operators, twisted translated Schur operators, um, <coughs> uh, would have complicated branch cuts and not be single valued. Um, this would be counterintuitive because these are just twisted correlation functions of four dimensional theories where they are uh, nice and, and single valued. Um, you think so, so indeed, um, you can check explicitly by just going over the list of sure operators uh, that such branch cuts, uh, branch cuts don't happen. So the OPE in the chiral algebra, which is the twisted version of the um, four-dimensional OPE, uh, is single-valued. And so you don't get complicated branch cuts in the correlation functions of these uh, of the Chiral algebra operators. Um, so uh, now you have a um, structure that you can associate to every four-dimensional n equals two theories, namely that of a Chiral algebra, um, a set of correlation functions that's completely meromorphic. And now you can basically ask two sort of types of questions. The first one being, well, if you're given, if you give me a theory, then um, <coughs> what is it the associated chiral algebra? What are the generators um, from which I can construct everything else? And what is their singular OPE? So this is one question, and you can answer this for, for a variety of questions. And we've tried to answer it at least for, for, for a variety of theories. And we've tried to answer it in some sense. Um, <coughs> And so that's the first half of uh, this lecture that um, um, that topic will be will be covered in the first half. And then um, you can ask a different question, which is sort of what is the space of all chiral algebras um, that come from a four dimensional n equals two theories? And are there sort of um, lessons I can learn um, about four dimensional n equals two theories that hold in full generality? without referring to a specific theory that follow from this chiral algebra structure. So that's answering that question, or at least giving you an idea of what kind of lessons you can draw um, um, from uh, the, just the existence of a chiral algebra will be the topic of the second half of the, of the talk. So for the first half, um, <coughs> chiral algebras, um, I already gave you one theory whose chiral algebra I wrote down, I wrote down its generators and I wrote down the singular OP and that's it. And that theory was just a free hypermultiplet. <coughs> the next thing uh, to do is of course the theory uh, the chiral algebra of the free vector multiplet. And from that we can build um, hopefully in some sense the chiral algebra of, of gauge theories. <coughs> so the first thing we should discuss is what are chiral algebras for, uh, for gauge theories. And how does all of that work? So first of all, I need to give you the chiral algebra of the free vector multiplet. <coughs> so the free vector multiplet sits in one of these representations um, <coughs> that I discussed in some abstract uh, abstractly, in the previous lecture, um, it sits in an, well, epsilon 1, 0, 0, and an epsilon bar 1, 0, 0, complex conjugate. So that's the name of the free vector multiplet representation. I forgot what the, what the, what the modern way is of referring to, these lecture, to this representation. 
its superconformal primary is phi, the same phi that Zohar wrote down in the previous lecture, which is just the, the scalar. If there's a non-trivial, non-abelian gauge algebra, it sits in the adjoint. Um, <coughs> then, of course, I can act with a supercharge. I get uh, a gageino, and um, <coughs> here I get the self-dual part or anti-self-dual part of the, of the field strength. So this would be, uh, I think, the epsilon multiplet, and the epsilon bar just points the other way and has the conjugate of, uh, of everything. So which one is sure? There is a, a sure operator in this multiplet, which is good for us. This one is not because it is an R-symmetry singlet. This one is also not because it's an R-symmetry singlet. And in fact, this is the sure operator. So it's a <coughs> gageino. It has uh, J1 equals, uh, in my case, J2 equals a half, J1 equals zero, R equals a half, and delta equals um, <coughs> three halves. So I think that would buy me, that would give me a sure operator. And um, so this guy is sure with um, dimension h, which is uh, delta. Uh, I'm doing this great. Delta plus yeah, delta plus j over two. So that's one. So what kind of um, <coughs> operator do we get? Well, if uh, I define b of z to be um, the usual thing, which one do I take here? Lambda tilde plus of z z bar in the q cohomology, and uh, the same I said lambda i plus dot. Oh, here's a dot, here's no dot, z z bar, q cohomology. And this guy I'm going to call not c, but uh, del c of z. Um, <coughs> then the OPE uh, of these guys is 1 over z minus w. Um, <coughs> which just follows from the free, this is a free theory, so computing the OP is, uh, uh, <coughs> is trivial. And the Chiral algebra is generated by uh, B del C with this OP. So why do I, so if I say del C, I can do this, but then I cannot really talk about C. In, if you think about the mode decomposition, like you do for the, to get, to, for example, from the stress tensor self OPE to the to the Virasora algebra, what you see here is that the zero mode of um, of C is not present in the Chira algebra. Um, <coughs> so in fact, this space of states includes all the modes of B, all the modes of C, except the zero mode of C. So. Um, <coughs> What I'm going to do is I'm going to say the Chiral algebra is generated by B and C, except uh, the zero mode. And I'll add that little caveat to the equations that are to follow. But I, um, unless you force me to, I was not planning on explaining this any further. It, the details are in our paper. It's a small subtlety, um, <coughs> but. Uh, um, yeah, so it's, it's kind of a technicality, and for that reason, I don't think it's particularly conceptually very important for what I'm about to discuss. So this is a bit of a silly choice. I should have just called this something like D, right? And then we would have a B, D, and then it would all be fine, and then I wouldn't have to talk about this zero mode. But this silly choice will be useful for what follows, and that's why I'm doing this. Um, so now let's talk about non-trivial gauge theories. Um, we're going to be nice and abstract, so um, let's not um, uh, let's not commit to any specific theory. So we're going to define a general gauge theory, T gauge, as uh, three vectors, well, as vectors, ve vector multiplets. Uh, in the adjoint 
of some gauge algebra. Uh, no, I don't need to write that down. G. Um, <coughs> coupled to, um, well, in principle, if you have a Lagrangian theory, this would be hypermultiplets. But of course, I can take some crazy non-Lagrangian theories. And all I require here is it uh, for this symmetry to be gauged. To be gaugeable at this level is uh, that it has um, another that it has a global symmetry um, G that I can gauge. So I'll take a general T um, <coughs> with global symmetry <coughs> G. Um, for example, a bunch of free hypers would do the job often, but um, I can take another another set, another theory. And um, then I couple them in the usual way. I gauge the symmetry. And then, of course, I compute the one loop beta function. And if I want this to be a super conformal field theory, then I require that the beta function vanishes at one loop. And by n equals 2 supersymmetry, that's sufficient um, for all loop for complete uh, conformality. Um, and the one loop beta function vanishing um, is the same as saying that the level of the flavor central charge of this theory, k4d, is equal to 4 times the dual Coxeter number of g. So um, fairly abstract, but uh, <coughs> I hope it's clear what, what we're doing here, right? So a question, natural question to ask now, if you give me not this theory p, but just its chiral algebra, and you give me a bunch of vectors in the adjoint, uh, and not well, not instead of the full vector multiplet, if you give me the S algebra associated, the chiral algebra associated to these vector multiplets, can I do the gauging purely at the level of the algebra? Is there some operation that I can do if you just give me these two chiral algebras that gives me the chiral algebra of the gauged theory? So for example, the chiral algebra here has flavor, has gauge non-singlets, right? In principle, I don't. Um, I don't have to, um, so in principle here, there are operators charged under, under G. And same here, and of course, in the end, I want to only have uh, gauge singlets in the Cara algebra. So what's the operation? Is there an operation that I can do that sort of combines these two Cara algebras in some non-trivial way and gives me the Cara algebra of the gauge theory? And uh, the answer to this question is yes, is, um, <coughs> and it's a very nice prescription. So let me, say, let me use this notation to say the Cara algebra of Tg from um, the Cara algebra of T, which in particular contains a G hat, affine cos, a G affine Kosmodi current at level uh, K2D equals minus 2 times the dual Coxeter number. So in particular, so what I'm saying here is just that this chiral algebra of this original theory contains some current j, j a of z, where a is an adjoint index, and uh, of the free vector multiplets. Um, whoops, the chiral algebra of the free vector multiplet uh, <coughs> we know is generated by um, b a c a modulo the zero mod. And the way to um, do this, so the prescription is as follows. Um, <coughs> I'll define, it's a BRST cohomology prescription. So uh, you define the BRST charge as uh, the integral dz over 2 pi i of the BRST current, uh, J BRST of Z. So this contour integral, if you act with the charge on a given operator, you um, take the con this contour integral around the operator. And all it does, of course, is just pick out the simple pole in the OPE of the BRST current with the operator. So alternatively, you can just see, just look at the OPE, take out the, pick out the singular um, the simple pole in the OP, and that's what the BRST action of the BRST operator is. Um, <coughs> where J BRST is the usual one, so J 
to a minus i over 2 f a b c well okay here it's fine <coughs> and um, the claim is now that um, <coughs> The Cairo algebra of the gauge theory is the BRST cohomology. So it's again a cohomological problem. We are already in the cohomology of funny Q, but now we do a BRST cohomology prop, a cohomology in the Cairo algebra. So it's a BRST cohomology um, <coughs> over the space of states that are either in chi t um, or the Cairo algebra of the free vectors. And this is true modulo the zero mode issue. Oh, sorry, the, the modulo has to go outside. So this is important. Um, so I say BRST cohomology, but if I want to take the cohomology of this guy, I better check that it's nil potent. So I have to do something like this, QBRST uh, on anything is zero. And indeed, this is true. So note that this is true um, <coughs> only if. So there's a current here uh, which has a non trivial OPE, but itself OPE is determined, the singular term is determined in terms of this, um, this level. And only if K40 is equal to 4 times the dual cuts to the member of G. So if the Monlu beta function vanishes, then I can do this, play this game. And if not, I cannot. <coughs> so this is the claim. I'm not going to um, do this in uh, very much detail. But uh, as a first, so a zeroth order consistency check that you can do is um, check that if an operator is BRST closed, then it's automatically gauge invariant. This is a true fact of life that I wasn't going to explain. But at the very least, um, restricting yourself to the Q closed guys, um, QBRST closed guys, indeed uh, kills all the non gauge invariant states. In fact, um, that, that one property may be something I can actually show. So, um, how am I doing? Uh, yeah, I, can, I think I have time to do that. So, um, let me do the example of um, <coughs> a charged operator uh, or I of Z in the Cairo algebra of T. So we have this Cairo algebra I said contains an affine Katsmudi algebra. It may be much bigger. It may contain all kinds of charged operators. Let me just take one of these operators and check that it's not BRST closed. Um, <coughs> the OPE of a charged operator, basically by uh, word identities, has to take this form. So it can be, it can have more singular terms, it can have more regular terms, but uh, this is the um, OPE of the current with the uh, with any charged operator, where this is of course the the associated um, representation matrices. So now it's easy because uh, <coughs> the action of the BRST operator on uh, this this guy. Well, let me insert it at the origin for simplicity. It's just a simple pole on this OPE. So um, there is some CA. But CA comes from another uh, sector, right? It comes from the free vector multiplet. So the OPE of C with this guy uh, and B um, <coughs> is automatically regular because these these sectors don't talk to each other 
So I have C A G A, G -A uh, minus one half and then F A B C C A um, I over two. What where did I put the C C B B C and um, the only thing that's going to give me well, I don't have to write this thing. The only thing that's going to give me a simple pole is precisely this OP. So uh, this is CA um, of 0, uh, TA, IJ. Um, <coughs> OG of 0. And uh, that's it. So here you see some non-trivial non composite operator. It's the normal ordered product of these two guys, but it's certainly not zero. So this is not BRSD closed. Um, what about the lambda? Lambda becomes B or D C. And so if you once you can do it as an exercise, try to see that uh, your B and C operators are also not too close. So here, it was important that I took a charged operator that was in the Kara algebra of T and not in the other Kara algebra, uh, the Kara algebra of the free vector, but you can easily show that the free, the Gaginos also, also disappear. <coughs> and so um, in the paper, we have a bit more explanation than I have time to give. In particular, um, we can think of this BRST operator um, as being something like a one-loop correction, morally speaking, at least, to our funny supercharge. So we're in the cohomology of funny Q, and now we're going, in that cohomology, restrict to a further cohomology. Um, and in some sense, this is just a one-loop correction to, uh, to the supercharge that you would get if you would uh, properly define it in the interacting theory. We also have a claim that this is enough, that uh, this one loop correction, just like the beta function, if you check it at one loop that it vanishes, it vanishes completely. Our claim is, we have a similar claim that this one loop correction, this BRST game, uh, is indeed uh, uh, enough to get the Kara algebra of the interacting theory. Is it one loop correction in the sense of Bayesian? If you want, yes, it's the one loop correction I, yeah, I would like, I, I don't have an explicit check of that, but it's really like the one loop correction that you would write, that you would get if you would write down the interacting Lagrangian and properly determine this, the associated Q and S out of which our funny Q is made. So, um, so this is a nice trick that allows you to, um, in some sense, quickly determine the chiral algebra of gauge theories. Um, maybe I should jump ahead a little bit to uh, change my order a little bit from what I wrote down. So I kept one thing of Zohar's notes, of Zohar's lectures. Let's look at this theory, SUN with 2N hypers um, <coughs> in the fundamental. And let me take n greater than 3, because for n equals 2, the flavor symmetry gets enhanced. n equals uh, 2, the flavor symmetry gets enhanced to SO8. And uh, that enhancement gives you a more fun Kara algebra, but not um, something I want to talk about in detail now. Um, <coughs> so what, are your, what operators survive this BRST uh, game and are part of the Kara algebra? Well, they have to be gauge invariants. So first of all, let's write down what we have in the ungauged theory. So in the ungauged theory, or the free theory, we would have free hypers. We have Q and Q tilde. And these, of course, have R symmetry indices as usual. They have uh, flavor indices A, A, and they have gauge indices um, I, I. And actually, I'll do it the other way around. So this will be flavor, and this will be gauge. So this gives rise to a 
pair of symplectic bosons we've seen before for each A and I, Q tilde A I of Z. And then there is the free vector, so we have the genus, and those give rise to your B, BC system. In the gear algebra. And out of this, we have to build gauge invariant combinations. And not only gauge invariant combinations, we need to build combinations such that they are uh, BRSD closed. Um, <coughs> and in fact, there's a very nice, um, there's a very natural thing you can do, which is just this. So you take Q. Um, where did I put the indices? QAI. So this is no tilde Q A. So you just take uh, the two hypers and you contract uh, their gauge indices. And if you uh, symmetrize this, you get um, <coughs> what? So you get an operator of dimension two, which is a triplet of the R symmetry. So this is the superconformal primary of a B hat one multiplet that I discussed before. And in the Cairo algebra. So this uh, gives rise, so this is in the, uh, we had one multiplet, and in the Cairo algebra, this is of course the same thing as Q, A, J, Q, A, I, which I define to be some, um, some dimension one operator. So remember that these were dimension one half, Q, Q tilde were dimension one half, and so, um, this is a dimension one operator in the Cairo algebra, and this is precisely my flavor symmetry current. So now you can see this sort of in two ways. You can view this flavor symmetry current as coming from a B hat one multiplet, which you had in that theory, or you can see it as just normal ordering the elementary building blocks in the, in the theory. Um, <coughs> and in fact, you can take, split it into a trace. So the trace gives you the U1 current and the rest gives you the SUNF current. Um, you can check that this is an U1. I think I wrote down the level somewhere. Um, yeah, with, uh, so this one doesn't really have a level because the normalization is ambiguous because there's no structure constant to normalize the thing by. But this one has a level. Um, uh, which you can easily determine because you know the OPE of the elementary building blocks. So you can just take the OPE of this current with itself and you find that it has uh, minus NC. So uh, here, I, sorry, I work in conventions where this is NC and two NC is equal to NF. So this is how you, how you can sort of start building your, your Chira algebra you had the gauge non-invariant building blocks, you combine them in a gauge invariant way, um, and then of course you check that it's BRST uh, closed and not BRST exact, and then you get operators in the gauge theory. Um, so these are simple ones. There's of course also the C hat zero, 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 the stress tensor multiplet, uh, where there's the SU2 R symmetry current that we already saw before. I, J. So in the, in the 4D theory upstairs, it's some complicated combination. Um, <coughs> in the Cairo algebra, it looks a bit similar, uh, simpler. Um, it looks like this in terms of the elementary building blocks. Uh, Q, that may not contract all the indices, they're contracted in the obvious way. Uh, minus lambda or minus b dot c. So this, you can check that um, this particular combination is actually in the cohomology of QBRST. And it's sort of precisely what you would get if you would take the four-dimensional expression for the SU2 R symmetry current and, um, uh, and, and do the twist. Because if you take the SU2 R symmetry current, you basically see all the fields that are charged under SE2R, and in the free hyper, it's precisely this, and in the free vector, it's precisely this. And you don't see the gauge field, you don't see the, the scalar dimension two 
uh, the dimension one scalar in the vector multiplet, and you don't see the, the fermions in the vector multiplet because they're not charged under the SU2R symmetry. Um, so there's a funny thing happening here, which I'd like to point out, which is that um, there is, if you have a flavor symmetry current, I can always define uh, the so-called Sugawara stress tensor, T Sugawara, which acts, this guy acts as a stress tensor on the currents, but it may not act as a stress tensor on everything else. So the Sugawara stress tensor is just some dimension two operator in the chiral algebra, which I can build from uh, if I have currents. And this is a proper a thing I can always do. Um, as it happens, in this case, T of Z minus uh, the Sugawara stress tensor of Z. So these are now, they were in the original chiral algebra, they're certainly two different operators. You can just look at how they're constructed. This T of Z is built out of Q's, Q tildes, B's, and C's, whereas this JJ is built out of, uh, J is built out of two Q's, so this guy is built out of four Q's. So these are different looking operators, and in principle, they're different in the chiral algebra. However, if you take their difference, then you find that this is B or ST exact. And so in the gauge chiral algebra, these two operators become the same. Um, so, well, now we have to make some conjecture as to what the full chiral algebra of this theory is, right? So we have some generators that we knew about. We know that, well, there's these currents. Then we thought maybe the stress tensor is a new generator because I cannot build it as a normal ordered product of currents, but that's false because the stress tensor is actually the same in the gauge theory as a normal ordered product of currents. So we don't have that as an extra generator. And so maybe we're done. Maybe this is just the full chiral algebra, right? So I'm not going to write the, the current self OP again. We've seen it before. So um, I can just claim, well, maybe these currents um, generate the chiral algebra, and their self OP is, is the canonical one for an affine cut smoothie current. Is this true? This is a tough question at this level. Are there natural other gauge invariant operators that I can build out of, let's say, the hypermultiplets? Sorry? Baryons. Thank you. And it turns out that these are new generators. So we have new generators. Uh, <coughs> these turn out to be generators, um, which are Q, Q, and then some epsilon to contract all the gauge indices. So where did I put my gauge indices? A1, An, uh, A1, An, and then I1, An. So they're in the n-fold antisymmetric representation of the, of the flavor index. And in the, in, the, in the chiral algebra, I just make the big Qs, little Qs. Sorry, I should have done that right away. And this defines uh, some baryon operator. So in the ungauge theory, this was not a generator, because in the ungauge theory, I had the Qs to play with. And if the Qs are generators, then I can just build this guy out of Qs. But in the gauge theory, the Qs have disappeared. They're no longer in the cohomology. And so I need to add these guys to the, to the chiral algebra as new generators. And so in this way, the game of determining what your generators are becomes very non-trivial. And um, of course, there's also B tilde. And How can I fix this from a 2D point of view? From gauge theory point of view, it's clear. From a 2D point of view, you could actually not have guessed that, because there is no need. This algebra, um, which was just the U1 plus SUNF um, affine Katsumudi symmetry, closes on itself. So it's a consistent subsector, as it happens of the full chiral algebra of this theory. And so there was no way, if we, someone would give you this, there was no way to check that it was inconsistent as a chiral algebra. But you just, but that's not what we're asking. What we're asking is what's the full chiral algebra of this theory? And then we have to deal with these kind of issues. 
So um, our conjecture is that this is it. So we have the Kara algebra generated with this by this this guy and the, the Kara algebra, and then uh, the two baryons as baryonic type operators as additional generators. And our conjecture is that's it. So this is beautifully put the Lagrangian description, but you want to go beyond, right? I want to go beyond. Yes. Are you saying I don't have time to go beyond? No, no. I'm asking <laughs> how you know if there are baryons or more crazy things uh, beyond. Oh. Um, if you, okay, let's, let's ask about beyond Lagrangian a little bit later. So um, for Lagrangian theories now, um, this conjecture stands and is not proven. In fact, even for Lagrangian theories, as soon as they're non-interacting, this BRST problem becomes non-trivial and um, we have no proof for the full Chira algebra of any Lagrangian theory. Even here, simple Lagra the simplest Lagrangian theory you can write down, basically, we don't have a proof that this is the full set of operators in the BRST cohomology um, <coughs> of the Chira algebra that started with these gauge non-invariant fields. So this is purely a Chira algebra problem at this level. It's just a BRST cohomology problem, and we were not able to solve it. Uh, um, no, the bootstrap analysis, you can do uh, small things. Like you can try to take a self-OP of this guy with itself, and maybe you see some crazy object that you could not generate in any other way. Then that would mean, well, you add this object to it. But at some point, you, we often find this, like this, we check that this doesn't happen, and that sort of the Jacobis are satisfied. So this is, again, a nice closed subalgebra. But um, is there, are there other generators? I don't know. In fact, we don't even know if, uh, for any theory, we don't know for sure if the Chira algebra is finitely generated. Could have infinitely many generators. I don't believe that to be true. I strongly believe that they are finitely generated, but I don't have a proof for it. And you see how complicated the question of generators becomes in this BRST cohomology problem. You throw away some stuff, and so suddenly further down, there could be things that were not generators before that suddenly become generators. Sorry? What kind of, what kind of chiral algebra does the baryon generate? I don't think the chiral algebra, the baryons, the, the question is what chiral algebra do the baryons generate? And um, they cannot be viewed independently from the currents as it happens. Because in the self OPE of the baryon anti baryon, you will find the currents back. So uh, this does not close on itself as a chiral algebra. And uh, so it's just some, um, some extra sector that needs this, this Chira algebra. Uh, I lost my board. <sighs> Gravity doesn't seem to, uh, seems to work in mysterious ways here. <coughs> um, so what should I say? I should say um, a few things uh, very quickly in words. Um, one thing I want to say is if you want to check these kind of conjectures, you can sort of go over the list of all the operators that you can build at low orders, right? You, you just build all the operators that you can from these building blocks, and you, you'd solve your BRST problem order by order in, the, in this dimension. And then for the first few levels, you find no new generators, and you count yourself uh, lucky. You think, OK, maybe my conjecture is true. Then in principle, there's another thing that you can do, which is compute the superconformal index. There's a particular limit of the superconformal index, the so-called sure limit. Um, so th this is essentially the S3 cross S1 partition function, uh, supersymmetric partition function, which in a particular limit just counts the sure operators. This is a happy coincidence. Uh, it counts them with signs. So it becomes almost a character of the Chira algebra, except there's a minus 1 to the f. So it's a graded character of the Chira algebra that you get from the sure limit of the superconformal index. And um, the Chira algebra itself has no supersymmetry, so I can't say that this is the index of a Chira algebra. That's a meaningless term at this point. Um, <coughs> so it's just a graded character of the Chira algebra. And um, 
So you can, for example, if you have a conjecture for a Kara algebra, you can compute its graded character and see that it matches, whether it matches or not, the superconformal index of the four-dimensional theory. This gives you some evidence, but not full evidence, because there could be cancellations, you don't know the exact uh, structure of nulls, etc. But it would help you a lot. Unfortunately, as it happens, computing the superconformal index for these theories is relatively easy. Computing just for this Kara algebra, <coughs> computing for this guy, the for this guy with these generators, computing the, the, the graded character or the character of this thing is um, very difficult. That's because these are affine currents at negative level for which the usual cuts formalized for the character don't work. And so you, you basically we can do this only sort of level by level. And so we can go down to level six or seven and then our mathematical code um, uh, gives up. And so uh, that's the order to which we check these conjectures. So there's an indexology section that I, I will completely skip. I can say much more about the connections to the, indis, the index, the various limits, et cetera, et cetera. But I want to get to other stuff. Um, so let me focus on that instead. Um, so before I end this section on um, on Lagrangian theories, or no specific theories, I want to add um, I want to sort of conjecture add some list some conjectures for Kara algebras of specific theories. All of these are conjectures. Um, so an F equals two NC superconformal QCD, that's the one we just discussed. So it's SU N F uh, plus U1 at level minus n, affine cuts Moody symmetry. So that's the current part, uh, plus baryons. With OPEs that you can find in our paper, or at least some case. Um, for similarly, there's a nice so-called minahan nemeshansky theory. Uh, so let's look at the A6 theory. Um, this theory is uh, a bit obscure. It's not Lagrangian, so there's no gauge theory description like this. But the index is known, and we know that it has E6 flavor symmetry. And so at the very least, um, it has E6 affine cuts Moody symmetry. And as it happens, the level turns out to be minus 3. So we also know that about the theory. Our conjecture is that this is all there is. There is no other um, generator in the Kara algebra. This is not trivial. We checked it again with against the index, but um, otherwise we can check it because it's just some some abstract theory that we don't know very little about. So let me also say that if your theory has extra supersymmetry, um, for example, n equals four super young mills, um, those I don't know. I'm not so sure about. They for sure contain this, but I'm not sure if they con if that's the entire Kara algebra. <coughs> N equals four super young mills. Um, um, <coughs> so the Kara algebra of N equals four super young mills, let me just say this, has uh, 0, 0,4 Susie. Well, it has, it's chiral, so I can just say it has N equals four super Susie. And I should add the qualifier, if you want to be precise, that it's a small N equals four. So this just happens because you have extra supercharges floating around in the four-dimensional theory that survive the twist and they become super or supercurrents. They become supercurrents in, in, uh, in, for, in the Kara algebra also. And the Kara algebra of n equals three theories uh, has um, n equals two super, super, sim super symmetry. And I should say that these are super Virazoro algebra. So just like the flavor symmetry gets enhanced to this infinite dimensional Katsumudi algebra, these super symmetries get enhanced to infinite dimensional um, um, uh, super Virazoro algebras. So that we have some conjectures for, um, um, for these Kara algebras, but in the interest of time, I, don't, I was not planning to discuss them. 
And so you can, of course, continue this list forever. And for every, all your favorite theories, you can try to determine what the Chi-Rho algebra is. Um, <clears throat> try to solve the cohomology problem or try to find it in some different, different ways. I think that would be interesting. What would be extremely interesting would be to um, try and see if you can, <coughs> at least in one or two cases, um, solve this cohomology, cohomological problem and have a conclusive proof um, for the Chi-Rho algebra of the corresponding theory. OK, any questions about Chi-Rho algebras of specific theories? Or other questions you've had. So, what's TN? TN is very nice. It has, of course, the three flavor symmetries. Um, so, and those sit at actually the critical level, because remember to gauge a theory, I need K2D equals minus 2H, but I gauge two TNs together or two punctures together. And so for TN, uh, it's minus the dual coxeter number, which is a very nice level to be at for the for a flavor symmetry. In particular, the stress ten the Sugawara stress tensor, if you know what that is, uh, it becomes a null state. Oh, I just introduced it, so you know what it is. It becomes null in itself. So in these three um, uh, uh, affine Kazmudi algebras, there is no Sugawara stress tensor. But of course, the full TN theory has a stress tensor still. And then we believe there's some other um, generators floating around. This is not the full thing. But we don't have a good, we have some um, ideas about it, but we don't have, uh, like for the others, we don't have a proof. Um, <coughs> yeah, and then of course you can close punctures, and that's another beautiful procedure. Gauging was beautiful in the sense that you can just do it purely at the level of the Cairo algebra. If you know about TN theories, you also know that you can close punctures. This corresponds, you can also do this purely at the level of the Chiral algebra. It's a procedure called Trinfeld Sokolov reduction. And it's also a BRST problem, but uh, it, it has to kill some of the flavor symmetry. So, for general class S theory, that's a huge class to us. I mean, we're just like simple gauge theories, we can't, we don't know. So, for general class S, there's of course now a, a picture which I can sketch, which is just you gauge and you close punctures and you do Trinfeld Sokolov reduction. But for general class S theory, it's, it's uh, yeah. They dep it depends on? Yes. Oh, that's a nice. So you want to ask if this is S dual uh, manifestly. Um, that's correct. Gauging depends on the pants decomposition, and it's non-trivial that if you take two different pants decompositions, you get the same Chi-Rho algebra. So this, in some sense, you could hope would be a um, some kind of bootstrap for Chi-Rho algebras, right? I take the Chi-Rho algebra of Tn and I glue it together in two different ways, and then I should get the same Chi-Rho algebra. So is there some constraints on the original Chi-Rho algebra that I can find in this way? I don't know the answer to that question, but I think it's a, it's it's fascinating would be very nice if that if you can actually get somewhere there I should also say that um, the basically the reason when I claim that this BRST problem sort of solves the whole thing it also means there's no further coupling dependence so you can actually show that all the three-point functions in a gauge theory are independent of the coupling so all of this is sort of fixed um, by free theory OPEs there's no further coupling dependence okay um, I'm running out of time, but I have 10 minutes for two pages, which is going to be great. Um, let's do um, non-Lagrangian theories. Um, so, just I so just so that I can show you um, <coughs> that there are certain bounds you can get, certain unitarity bounds, that follow from this Chiral algebra story. So, let me take a theory T. And let me suppose that it has uh, flavor symmetry uh, flavor symmetry algebra G. Um, then if T is a good theory, um, there's an associated current. And in the Chiral algebra, we have uh, delta AB plus IFABC. 
FC of JC of zero divided by Z. Of course, if uh, it's a good theory, then it also has a stress tensor. And if the theory has a stress tensor, then let me remind you, it has an SE2 R symmetry current in the same super conformal multiplet. And that guy gives me a stress tensor in the Chiral algebra. So um, with the usual OPE. And finally, um, if this guy is a good stress tensor, which we'll assume, then the stress tensor OPE with this current is um, <coughs> um, sorry, J A looks like this. Oh, this is it. So um, this just you can either compute it upstairs or it just follows from the fact that this is a stress tensor and this guy is a Fior zero primary. The fact that it's a Fior zero primary follows because there can be nothing of even lower dimension. So this is a consistent subalgebra. Um, <coughs> the OPE closes here, and uh, um, so in principle this is all um, perfectly good, and it of course determines all the JT correlators. So this determines all the T. J correlators, and also the, the correlation functions of their normal order products. So for example, you don't need to copy this, but I am going to need it a bit later. So this is in our paper also. Let me take a four-point function, and let me um, move the four points to the canonical positions, point one at the origin, point two at some coordinate z, Point three at one and point four at infinity, and um, <coughs> then this has to as z goes to zero, it has prescribed singularities. As z goes to one, it has prescribed singularities, and as z goes to infinity, it also has prescribed singularities. So these singularities come from this, and so you can just uh, solve this. It's easier to do in Mathematica, but what you get is um, something that looks like this. plus z squared over 1 minus z squared delta AD delta BC. So these sort of take into account the three strongest singularities as you go to 0, 1, and infinity. And then there are some uh, subleading singularities. K2 D z minus 1. Uh, So this four-point function is just fixed. It follows directly from, from this simple equation. Um, so now let me look at the particular operator. Let me call it uh, j squared of z. And I define it to be um, j a, the normal order product of j a of z, j a of 0. So in other words, it's just the limit as w goes to z of um, j a w j a of z minus the singular terms k two d over z squared uh, times delta a a, which is just a dimension of g, and that's it. The subleading term here. This is also in principle a singular term, but of course by the anti-symmetry of the structure constants, it vanishes if I contract the indices in this particular way. So this is how I define the operator. And this should be um, w minus it. So what is this operator, right? It's some operator in the Cairo algebra. Where does it come from? It's a dimension two singlet. So um, it's basically our Sugawara guy. Um, <coughs> Um, but where does it come from in, in four dimension? It could be like the stress tensor, and it could be the same operator um, as, as the stress tensor here, and then it would come from a C hat multiplet, a C hat zero zero multiplet. There's another option. If you just go over the list of possible multiplets, um, <coughs> and you have to, um, but, and, and you see what this J squared of Z could be, 
given also the fact that it appears in the OPE of J with itself, it can be C hat 0, 0, or a B hat 2 multiplet. And that's about it. I think it can also be a higher spin current, but let's assume our theory doesn't have higher spin symmetry. And then it can be either this or those, or a combination of these two. <coughs> so a linear combination. What I'm interested in is the B hat 2 part of this linear combination. In general, this guy will be a linear combination of the two. And I'm interested in the B hat 2 part of the guy. So how do I extract it? Well, a B hat 2 um, will have zero two-point function with the C hat 0, because these are different types of operators. And the C hat 0, I know, because the C hat 0 is just a stress tensor. So I'm going to make sure, I'm going to add to this j squared a multiple of the stress tensor so that it's orthogonal to the stress tensor itself. Are we good? So let's write all the, all the norms, or in this case, two-point functions of all the operators considered, cons we are considering. So these are dimension two operators. T z, t0 is this. T z, sorry, T z j squared of zero. Well, that's just the limit as z goes to w, or z w goes to zero in this case, of t of z j a of um, w j a of 0. And this three-point function I can compute from the OPE of t with itself, with, with j. So it's the limit as w goes to 0 of, um, well, let me do this schematically. So j a of w times j a of 0 over z squared plus del j a over z plus dot 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 and then plus um, the other one where you sort of swap w with 0. And then you can use the fact that by cluster decomposition, this guy should go to 0 as z goes to infinity. So, it re it, so this vanish by, in the total sum, these will vanish by cluster decomposition. <coughs> because this is just a dimension 2 operator. So I only need to look at the singular terms. Um, the singular terms are uh, a little bit non-trivial to work out, so you get some funny cancellations. But in the end, you find that this is um, something which I have, I do have it. It's k to the times the dimension of g. Right, that comes from the two-point function of jj contracted with itself um, <coughs> over, over z to the fourth also. And uh, then, of course, there's j squared of 0 with itself. But that is very simple if I realize that that's just um, a limit of that four-point function. It's the z to 0 limit with all the singular terms subtracted. So this is immediately uh, computable. I don't have time to do it exactly, but I think it's 2 times k2d times the dimension of g again. Did I do this correctly? Yeah. Dimension of g um, <coughs> times k2d plus the dual Coxeter number. Where the dual Coxeter number is uh, something like fabc, fabc, up to factors that I forgot, but uh, it's, uh, it's something like that. So you see, my, my two-point function j squared is not orthogonal to the stress tensor. My, the, my operator j squared is not orthogonal to the stress tensor because this two-point function is 0. So we're going to define the new guy, j hat of z. And I want it to be orthogonal to the stress tensor. So to do that, I'll take it to be j squared of z minus whatever this thing is. So it's uh, 2 k2d dimension over c times t. 
So this, I claim, has to be a b-hat 2, because t is by construction the c-hat 0, 0. And um, you also have to check that it is not a descendant, but in this case, you can show that it's a primary. And so it has to come from a b-hat 2. So j-hat of z is a twisted b-hat 2 operator. B had to, a twisted B had to, uh, well, so more precise, I mean, let me write operator and say in words what I precisely mean. What I precisely mean is you take the sure operator in this superconformal multiplet, which happens to be the superconformal primary, it's the guy at the top, and it's the twisted translated up version of, um, of that particular operator. And um, I can compute that j hat z t of 0 is indeed 0, if I pick my factors of 2 and other case and so on correctly. But more interestingly, you will find that j hat z j hat 0 is uh, what? Uh, it is 1 over z to the fourth now times some uh, funky combination of terms. Uh, which I believe is 2kd, where d is the dimension of g, times k2d plus the dual coxeter number minus k2d d over c. This is also k2d. So this tells me that the norm of this b hat 2 guy is fixed in terms of these sort of canonical numbers in the, in the <coughs> uh, uh, in the Chira algebra. So if you give me the level k and uh, the type of algebra, so I know it's dual Coxeter number and dimension, and you also give me the two-dimensional, the, the flavor central charge, uh, oh sorry, if you al also give me the C central charge, then I just know the norm of this guy. But this is just a norm of a b hat 2 multiplet, it's just a two-point function of a b hat 2 multiplet twisted. And in the Chira algebra, the norm may be positive or negative, but the b hat 2 multiplet upstairs must have a positive norm. That's a unitary theory. So um, <coughs> this should also be something like epsilon, but it's a b hat 2. So let me call it m. It's in the 2, so it has four R symmetry indices of zz bar. Uh, ui to ul, um, and then I have a ua to ud, m, uh, a, b, c, d of zero, which is a bunch of u's again, a bunch of epsilon i a, epsilon j b, epsilon uh, l d over x to the eight, with some norm. And in conventions that I'm not entirely sure about, but I think it's these conventions, n has to be positive. <coughs> so unitarity tells me that this is a positive norm. Maybe it's negative. I'm not entirely sure about the signs now. Um, <coughs> but I think with these choice of epsilons, you basically have to go to a basis where um, everything is orthogonal, so you have some, some orthonormal basis. And then you check that the coefficient is indeed positive. Um, but this norm I've computed in terms of the elementary quantities of the theory. And what this tells you is that um, <coughs> there is some non-trivial inequality on these coefficients that has to be obeyed in any, uh, any sort of unitary theory. So, sorry, so you, you showed that this combination is positive, but, but is it expected or? It's not, a, it's not. Oh, it, it's just finding it. I mean, I, so you kind of predict it to be half multiple, but does it guarantee that this is positive or? No, so what this leads to is the following constraint. It tells me that um, if I translate this back to 4D language, remember that C2D is minus 12 times C4D, and K2D is minus C4D over two, then I get, if I did this correctly, uh, that uh, there's this inequality over k 4 d minus 12. And uh, this 
has to be true in a unitary theory, and it's a non-trivial consequence of the Chira algebras. In fact, if this, um, in fact, we checked that that all the theories that we know, uh, over at least for a large class of theories, we checked, of course, that this thing, this inequality, is obeyed. Um, we know what happens if it's saturated. If it's saturated, we know that um, the stress tensor there becomes equal to uh, j squared. So there's a null state in this in this um, set of uh, um, <coughs> Uh, set of two operators, so j squared minus the stress tensor becomes null when this thing is saturated, which precisely says that the stress tensor, um, that j squared and t are the same thing, basically. So in other words, the stress tensor of the Chiral algebra is the Sugawara stress tensor. So... <coughs> yes. Um, yes, okay. Um, the question is if I could, sorry, if you don't know the chiral algebra. If you don't know the chiral algebra, the question was if you can uh, find this unitarity bound just directly in four dimensions. I am not sure if, um, what it would amount to is um, you give me a 4D theory, it has some b hat multiplets, b hat ones and b hat twos. And I would need to know um, the two point function of the b hat two in terms of if, like, all I give you is the two point function of the b hat ones, or the four point, not even the four point function, right? I give you the two point function of the b hat ones, and I give you the central charge. And now you have to tell me what the two-point function is of the b-hat 2. Because that, I, that is the thing I determined in terms of k and c from the Chiral algebra. But you, 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 you use the Chiral algebra to multiply them, but you have a combination of operators. No, I used the Chiral algebra to compute the norm of a b-hat 2 multiplet, which I could not have done otherwise. Because I computed this j squared two-point function from the four-point function of, um, of single j's, by taking the, the the particular limit, right? So I had this four-point function, which determined the norm of uh, j squared. Uh, it determined this thing, and I don't think I would have been able to determine it otherwise. That's a non-trivial two-point function. This thing required crossing symmetry and and all of these things to be obeyed, and required the the mere morphicity. It's not just a short distance uh, thing. So I don't think I would be able to, to get this number without knowing this. And that's why I needed the Chiral algebra. So uh, we know when it's saturated, that's what I wanted to say. If T Sugawara equals uh, T, so, there, so um, basically, this b hat 2 gets zero norm. It decouples. Um, so there is no, in the physical theory, there is no b hat 2 in the singlet in this, uh, in this sector. So only, uh, of course, whoop, this is just a subsector. Uh, these were just. Um, the subsector generated by this guy, and in this sector, there is no b hat 2 in the flavor singlet combination. This b hat 2 disappears, and the Sugawara stress tensor becomes the actual stress tensor. So this also translates, by the way, into some Higgs branch uh, Cairo ring relation, <coughs> which we, um, uh, which yeah, is then a consequence also of this, uh, <coughs> of the saturation of this equality. So in this case, you get in, in uh, inequality um, um, that uh, involves flavor central charge and, um, and uh, central charges. More generally, other people have derived uh, bonds like this one 
C40 greater than 11 over 30, and um, other bonds on flavor central charges that don't involve the C central charge, but that depend on the particular algebra that you consider. So it's expressible in terms of some basic quantum, basic numbers uh, invariants of the algebra that I don't, um, <laughs> didn't take notes, so I can't reproduce them right now. But they're also K4D inequalities of, of this type. So these inequalities, I think, would not be, I believe, would not be possible to, it wouldn't be possible to obtain them um, without knowing this Chiral algebra. But now that you know about them, uh, about Chiral algebras, you can derive them. And these, in some sense, constrain uh, the space of all four-dimensional n equals two superconformal field theories, both Lagrangian and non-Lagrangian. Uh, no matter what theory you have, if it's unitary, um, if it has a stress tensor, and in this case, if it has flavor, um, then these bonds that we have derived must be obeyed. So in this sense, this constraint, uh, constrains the landscape a little bit further. I think our dream here would be to get even many more constraints, uh, such that maybe in some sense you can um, completely classify um, the um, space of four-dimensional n equals two theories, at least, say, with small number of generators for the Chiral algebra, just uh, because they are the only consistent Chiral algebras that are um, compatible with four-dimensional unitarity. This is, of course, a very far-fetched dream, but this is sort of a first step in, in, in the right direction, where you um, get at least some non-trivial constraints on the space of, um, uh, space of four-dimensional theories um, that hold in full generality. So that's why I think this is a nice, uh, a nice result, that, uh, because of its, its, its universality. It doesn't need Lagrangians, it doesn't need anything, um, except for the n equals two theories and, uh, and basic assumptions there. So that's uh, all I wanted to say uh, about this. Um, there are tons and tons of topics that I could have talked about and didn't. I didn't talk much about the index. Um, <coughs> I didn't talk much about sort of further ideas about unitarity bounds. I didn't talk about the Higgs branch much and the connection with the, with the Higgs branch as a variety, how you can get this from the Chiral algebra. There's a beautiful story there. I didn't talk about defects. I didn't talk about connections with localization. I didn't talk about connections with holography. Um, I didn't talk about partition functions with defects. And I think that's about the list of topics that people have already written papers on. I didn't talk about six dimensions, didn't talk about two dimensions, and well, et cetera, et cetera. So there are really tons and tons of things to, uh, um, that I could have followed up on. But I think since I'm out of time, I'll just stop here. Thank you.